Hey everybody, welcome back. As I speak, there is a very rare new moon solar eclipse happening in the sign of Aries, and it's a hybrid solar eclipse that starts off as an annular eclipse. This is when you can see the ring of fire around the moon as it passes through the sun, and then it morphs into a total eclipse. And this phenomenon happens in only 3% of all solar eclipses, so it's very rare. The other thing that's notable about this is that it's happening at the 29th degree of Aries, and that's called the anoretic degree. It's a critical degree, so much of the world is going to be feeling this energetically. Uh, Pluto is squaring this eclipse at zero degrees of Aquarius. So Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth. This is going to be a new beginning, a change that's both karmic and faded, and it's going to most likely be permanent. This energy is going to last until at least the end of this year, and some astrologers are saying that the residual energy of this eclipse will last for up to two years because Pluto square solar eclipse is also squaring the north and south nodes of the moon. So right now we're going to take a little bit of a look at how this eclipse might be affecting you by going through all the houses starting with the first house. If there is an eclipse or a new moon happening in your first house, this is going to be a time for self-focus. The first house rules your personality and personal appearance, so this is going to be a time of beneficial change in those areas for you. If it's right on top of your ascendant in your first house, it's going to be intensified. So you might decide to lose weight, get healthy once and for all. And if you start a weight loss program, just make sure that you begin it when the moon is transiting through a fixed sign. So Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, or Scorpio, because you'll be more apt to stick to the program if it started in a fixed sign. A new moon or eclipse in the second house can create an emphasis on finances and possessions. And this time could signal a change in income patterns for you. It's a great time for you to review your finances, make sure you're happy in that department. And if you're not, then you need to reconfigure them. You might also be considering the creation of a brand new business, or you might make a decision to hone a new skill to make you more marketable in the workplace. You might be drawn to real estate investments as an added stream of income. And depending on what aspects the moon's making at this time, you might feel either really secure or really insecure about your finances right now. Moving right along, a new moon or eclipse in the third house means that intellectual or learning activities will be stimulated. So you could decide to go back to school. It could also mean an activation in communications. If you write or speak for a living, there could be a change coming for you in that realm. So you might be asked to put more time into those things. Third house also has to do with your siblings. So don't be surprised to hear some news about family. It also represents aunts, uncles, cousins. So this could be a year for maybe a family reunion. New moon or solar eclipse in your fourth house takes on more importance because it's an angular house. It sits on the IC or the Imam Kohli cusp of your birth chart. So this could mean a big change in your home and family. You could be moving into a new home. You could be renovating. You could be relocating to a different part of the country. You could also be having significant life-changing interactions with family members because the fourth house is all about your roots. So there might be an event centered around that, meaning either your parents or the place that you grew up with. New moon or solar eclipse in the fifth house will create opportunities for personal creativity. So you might decide to take a dance class, an art class, yoga class. You might decide to spend more spare time indulging in things that make you happy and speak to your soul. So the fifth house is also about your children, specifically your first child. So Sometimes during a new moon or solar eclipse, you may be more connected to all of your children and sometimes just your first child, but whatever the case may be, this might be a good time for you to check in with them, especially if they live far away from you. New moon or solar eclipse in the sixth house will put the emphasis on coworkers, employees, work environment, your productive work and services that you perform. And it also, um, concerns 
your health, habits, and pets. So when a lunation happens here, this may be a good month for you to decide to see your doctor, hire a new employee if you own your own business, or set new priorities in your work situation. So it's also a great time to quit smoking, quit drinking, start an exercise program, or get a new pet. In the seventh house, there will be an emphasis on your closest relationships. So your marriage, business partnerships, very close personal friends. If you're not married, you could be getting a marriage proposal this year. If you're with someone in a committed relationship, could you be splitting up? Well, that's always possible, but it has to be supported by the natal promise in your birth chart. So otherwise I wouldn't worry about it. Usually solar eclipses are about beginnings, not endings, but I guess in order for a new beginning to happen, something else has to end. An eclipse or new moon in the eighth house. The eighth house represents death, taxes, investments, sex, and anything that goes on behind closed doors. So you could be receiving an inheritance. There could be a major change coming with your financial investments. And the one thing that I'll tell you is that if you have a lunation here in your eighth house, pay attention to your books and finances this year if you own your own business. If your progressed moon is in the sign of Sagittarius at this time, there's a strong possibility that you could be audited. Now, I'm just realizing right now that my my eighth house is going to be affected by this eclipse, um, but my progressed moon's in Cancer, so I just have to say that I'm happy about that. <laughs> okay, ninth house is in the house of philosophy, higher learning, and long-distance travel. And this is a fun one because it means that you might be going on a nice trip soon. So speaking of which, did you know that you can use your birth chart to choose the best vacation spots for yourself? I'll be making a video about that soon. It's actually pretty cool how that's all calculated. So with the ninth house eclipses and new moons, you might be finding yourself exploring the world this year. You could be going back to school, studying Eastern philosophies, astrology, the Bible, or you could be practicing yoga more often. Anything that deepens your connection to spirit. An eclipse in the 10th house will bring a new change in your house of career and public image. Again, the lunations in this house are very important. This is your reputation, a business that you own, or your career path. Depending on what else is transiting your chart, this may be the time for you to start a new business. If you already have a business, you might want to promote it. You could be getting an influx of more business following this eclipse. You could be asked to spend more time speaking and making public appearances if that's what your work involves. If you don't own a business, an eclipse in the 10th house will have something to do with your employer. Maybe they give you a promotion or put more responsibility on you. An eclipse in the 11th house involves a change in your social life, your friendship circles, and the organizations you belong to. So be on the lookout for this. Maybe it's time you started going out more with your friends. Maybe this is a good time to start a program with a group once a week or a couple times a month. This house also represents your goals and dreams. So this is a great time to write down your goals, set new intentions, and just go for it. And I always recommend getting a journal if you don't already have one and start writing things down daily and see what you observe. Okay, finally, an eclipse in the 12th house is all about the subconscious mind. It's about introspection. So you could experience a psychological breakthrough. An eclipse here can give you the opportunity to work through any deep shadow work that needs healing this year. So your skeletons might come out of the closet or secrets may be revealed to you, but these are the revelations that need to come to the surface in order to be reconciled and then purged from you so that you can grow as a person. So this is what I have for you today. Until next time, have a wonderful week.